sustainability has become a global priority. Actions at national and international levels have fostered more inclusive development and emphasised environmental stewardship. Members of the World Trade Organization have agreed to eliminate harmful fishing subsidies. This decision means that fishing on the high seas has become unprofitable and fishing effort has declined. To promote more equitable development, funding previously spent on harmful subsidies is diverted to support sustainable fishing practices, capacity building for better management, and is invested in education, infrastructure and healthcare. The political climate in 2050 supports inclusive ocean governance. This has led to effective institutions, the end of corruption and transparent decision making in most countries. Fishing nations have taken a collaborative approach to resource management. Small island developing states in particular play a leading role in fisheries management. Through the United Nations, the global community has signed a legally binding treaty for the high seas to protect biodiversity and share the wealth of the oceans. The treaty has led to the sustainable use of ocean resources and a more equitable distribution of ocean benefits. It has also led to the designation of large, effective, no-take marine protected areas that protect unique habitats. Technological developments allow for real-time tracking and effective monitoring of all fishing activities. The increased transparency supports responsible fishing and allows consumers to make more informed choices. Together, these efforts have led to the recovery of fish stocks and biodiversity. Turtles, sharks and stocks of tuna and swordfish are plentiful. Increased fish stocks and improved fisheries management have led to better catches. Increased fishing income is invested in education, healthcare and infrastructure. Levels of food security, well-being and equity are high.